would have a new president of the Republic of Ghana sworn in. And also, by the midnight of today, into January 7th, tomorrow, would have a new parliament. The seventh parliament of the Fourth Republic of Ghana will be sworn in with these persons leading that particular parliament as the leaders. I'm going to run you through uh, briefly uh, the um, leadership of this particular parliament which will be eventually sworn in later today here on Key Point. Stay with us. Back to Key Point. Now, tonight, all other things being equal, by midnight of today, the life of this sixth parliament of the Fourth Republic will come to an end. And the life of the seventh parliament of the Fourth Republic, with some 125 new members of parliament adding up to the rest to make up 275, will eventually be sworn in with a new Proch of leadership who will be leading the house for the next four years, Terrace Pyrebo. So I'm just going to run you through exactly who are the persons. And the leadership of parliament is gradually firming up. Now, the man you see here, Professor Michael Coy on your screens, is a proposed speaker and, and well, by convention, and, and it's just going to be mere formality, he would eventually uh, be approved by the house to superintend over the workings of parliament for the seventh parliament of the fourth republic which will be sworn in now the honorable jose also came in as a very surprise you know candidate for this first deputy speaker position but then for those who have been monitoring and following his uh, work on the floor of the house they are not very surprised about him because he is a lawyer his very very instructive uh, ideas and and proposals and positions when it comes to uh, issues and matters of law he's a member of the constitutional legal and parliamentary affairs committee of parliament so yes that is not much of a surprise. Now, if you look at the Honorable Alban uh, Sumano, Kingsford Bagman, well known. I mean, he's been in Parliament uh, for this long. So clearly, uh, he comes in as a second Deputy Speaker. These are persons we're hoping and eventually will lead the uh, Seventh Parliament of the Fourth Republic. And also, uh, these are the persons, the majority leadership. And just so you know, the new patriotic party will be in the majority in the Seventh Parliament of the Fourth Republic. And Honorable Seche Mensa Bonsu crosses over now from the minority leader into the majority leader. A very plausible and possible uh, leader over that period. And Ajua Safo is a member of parliament for the Dom Kabinya constituency comes in as a deputy majority leader one person also who was not really being looked at in all the permutations of the persons who could possibly be the deputy majority leader but she's in there because see i mean our chairman is a majority chief whip and uh, she he's also going to be in there and then they are going to have uh, persons also eventually support them or uh, assist them in that regard now just for you uh, as well for the minority now the ndc will be in the minority in the seventh parliament of the fourth republic and these persons as you see on your screens are the ones who are going to lead them Aruna Idris who minority leader James Klusha Veji deputy minority leader he is the current chairman of the finance committee of parliament he was in pole position his name also came up when the voter caucus of the uh, uh, NDC in parliament put up his name as uh, a possible minority leader now Muntaka Mubarak still uh, maintains his whip position but this time around on the minority side as the minority chief was going to be assisted by Ahmed Ibrahim as a member of parliament for the Banda constituency and then also Konfordoyo Kujo Gansa who's a member of parliament for the Ada East constituency so uh, these are the persons as you see on your screens right now and the minority leadership uh, in terms of the, uh, what the seventh parliament of the fourth republic will look like. So clearly, the leadership of the seventh parliament uh, of the fourth republic, which would have its life start as of the midnight of today, uh, is what you're seeing right now. Some of them have been eventually confirmed. The speaker is still uh, going to go through the formality of being confirmed by the house. But all is set for the investiture of uh, the president-elect, Nanado Dankwe Kofuado, and his vice, Dr. Alhaji Mahmoud Baumia, on Saturday at the Independence Square. My colleague, Esi Benewanyame, has been to the square and has put through this report. I'm standing here at the main arc of the Independence Square, uh, where the inauguration ceremony will take place here tomorrow. And um, when I look down here, I can see a lot of activities ongoing here. 
In the middle, uh, I can see a black star. Uh, people are working over there. I am told that is where the president will be sworn in. I can see the tent for the president is ready uh, with a blue tent. And there are a lot of tents here, about one, two, three, four, five, including that of the president. That has been fixed now. And it also goes with the uh, red, yellow, and green colors of the flag, of the national flag. There are a lot of activities ongoing here. Personnel from the Ghana National Fire Service are also here. Um, people are fixing lights. Others are also arranging chairs, all in preparation for tomorrow's uh, ceremony. I can see your vehicle here. It is working. What exactly are they doing here? Yeah, you know, they, they have painted the, the place. They needed the turntable table ladder. That is the name of our appliance. The turntable table ladder to gain height for them to paint the area and also to install the electrical gadgets, bulbs and other things. That is why. For tomorrow, tomorrow, what actually will the fire service be doing around? Yeah, tomorrow we will stand by in case of any emergency we will be attending to. That we will be here tomorrow also. Yeah. Prepared. Fully prepared. So this is the incoming director of operations at the presidency, Lord Kome, and he's taking majority leader Alban Bagbin and majority chief whip Muntaka Mubarak around the uh, Independence Square, briefing them on preparations ahead of the inauguration. How far has preparations go per your observations and whether we are ready by tomorrow to uh, go through the ceremony? Well, I think so. Um, as you can see, every, everything is, is about complete. All, all we're doing is putting the finishing touches to it for um, praying that the weather would favor us, for us to start and end well. I'm told that about 6,000 chairs will be arranged here. As I can see, I don't know the number now, but it, it is not up to that number. Are we expecting... It is more than the number if you could count it yourself. So that's it. <laughs> we have 3,000 plus on the right flank and then and then they left as well. But that is reserved for VVIPs who have some special cars that have been invited. So that's about it. Um, at the other stands, I don't want to call it popular stand because this, this time around we have designed it such that from wherever you sit, you should be able to observe the proceedings um, very clear. So they are no more popular stands. They are, they are executive stands, if you like. And it's also strictly by, by invitation. Um, what we're doing is also providing some big screens to allow for the thousands that would definitely would want to join in here. Uh, unfortunately, because of constitutional restrictions, this is the House of Parliament and therefore it has to remain as such. And that's why we are pleading with the general public to bear with us. But in the meantime, outside there, where the celebration would be on, would be giant screens that people would be comfortable and every proceeding in this house would be seen live on TV. In addition to that, we've asked the Information Services Department to deploy their screens and their vans across all districts in the country so that in our villages and our hamlets we should be comfortable watching these things live on television by KTC TV3 and all the other stations as well. I don't know if you have uh, monitored the entrance and then the exits, whether it is ready as at now, so that we don't know if people, when people come in, they would have the privilege of going back and coming in as well. What arrangements uh, have been made with regards to that? Absolutely. The, 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 the security arrangements have been put in place. Difficult for me to share with you the details because it remains uh, uh, very, very security. Um, but what I can just assure the public is that everything is really under control. You, you don't need to come in and get out because everything you need for the two or three hour session would be provided. Water to drink, if you want to go to the loo, air conditioned uh, loo places have been provided. Um, uh, those in the stands would have a lot to eat if they still want to eat. And I'm sure that protocol wise, all the uh, invited guests uh, know how to behave in some of these functions. So you get into you get into the yard and you're safe. Excellent. Uh, it's 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 just more than ready. As, as I said, we're just waiting for for tomorrow um, with a good weather, 
and I'm sure God is on our side. I, I, I believe that it's adds to Ghana's excellent democratic credentials, which will be on display also again tomorrow. So, clearly, all is set there, right there you see on your screens. That venue will be the venue that would host this particular event of having uh, the president-elect and his vice president sworn in to superintend over the affairs of this country for the next four years. All is set for that inauguration ceremony tomorrow as in furtherance of our democratic credentials as a country another time. Now, the Ghana Police Service has also assured all is set for inauguration of the president-elect, Nanado Dankwe Kufwa and his vice, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Now, Director General in charge of operations of the Ghana Police Service noted only persons with accreditation will be allowed into the inner perimeter of the Black Star Square on Saturday. For the security side, very adequate preparation have been made. We don't want all other activities to come to a halt because of this uh, ceremony. So that in the night, you can still see men on night patrols. You can still see night snap checks. So that at least to take care of any activity like robbery or hardy crimes that may occur. That is why we are bringing men from the other regions and then still maintain other core duties within the metropolis. Coming to this particular perimeter or to come to the independent square will be strictly on accreditation. All right, so uh, that's the Ghana Police Service. Then, as you might really be aware, they have announced some roads that will be closed as a result of what's going to be happening tomorrow. And stay with us on News 360, give you all that and more details as to how that is going to be. But then, as is expected, over 11 heads of state uh, across the world, and indeed the African continent, are expected to grace the occasion tomorrow. And some heads of states have already started arriving ahead of the inauguration uh, of the president elect Nanado Dankwe Kufwad and his vice president Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. So, the president of Zambia, Edgar uh, Lungo, arrived at the Kotoko International Airport at about 3 30, that 15 30 GMT, aboard the presidential challenger jet. Now, the uh, official jet of that country is the presidential challenger jet and you see on your screens right now he inspecting the guard that was mounted on uh, his behalf. President Lungu was accorded a 21 gun salute and inspected uh, a guard of honor. Another African president who also arrived afternoon was NS Baikoroma uh, as you see on your screens right now also uh, there and also been giving that uh, welcome. So uh, Equatorial Guinea president Jodo Obiang Nguema Mbasogo also arrived at uh, about uh, 4 p.m. That's uh, 16 hours uh, GMT also uh, participating in the investiture of Nanad Nankwe Kofuado and his vice president Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. So clearly uh, all is up everybody a bit. Ellen Johnson Selif also uh, in there. So uh, the uh, various presidents and heads of states across the continent and the world and indeed some vice presidents also expected to grace this particular occasion so that's what's happening at the airports we we have our eyes and ears on the ground at the various places where everything else this particular inauguration will be taking place here on your election command center